This is my 2009 Hyundai Accent L, uh, L being the base trim level for that model year. Um, technically it might not be an L, I think the base trim was actually called something else here in Canada. It might be like a GS or something, I forget how the trims work, but it's a base model. So no fancy options, um, no cruise control, no ABS, no traction control. Um, no power windows, no power locks, no keyless entry, uh, none of that stuff. Just your standard issue basic Korean eco box with a five speed manual transmission. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, accents of this generation, this is known as the MC generation, so it's the third generation of accent. Um, they were available as this, a two-door hatchback or a four-door sedan. Um, my brother and my mother both have the sedan version of this same car, so uh, I know them well. Um, mine has about 170,000 kilometers on it-ish, uh, slightly less than that, and uh, it's been dead reliable. Um, short of sort of basic maintenance items like... Um, the spark plugs and you know all that kind of stuff um, I haven't had anything go wrong except the starter once and um, the reason the starter actually went uh, was because um, not that the starter failed it was the grounding strap on the starter that connects two parts of it actually rusted out so thank you uh, Nova Scotia Department of Transportation for the massive amount of salt you put on the roads in the winter but uh, yeah that was a fun weekend because I, I basically had to drive it everywhere and bump start it everywhere I went so I kind of had to make a game out of it in the sense that I'd have to park on a slight incline everywhere I stopped so that was interesting but uh, yeah without further ado <coughs> excuse me I've got a bit of a cold today um, we'll go take a look so <coughs> it's um I always thought it was a pretty nice looking car. Um, it's not super boring, um, at least in my opinion, and you know, my opinion isn't gospel, and I'm a fan of cheap basic cars, so I'm weird, but um, I sort of like the profile of it. Um, Accent hatchbacks got this grill with this uh, thick bar across the front. Sedans actually got a different grill and um, different markets. So, for example, the Asian market, uh, they had even still a different grill and different bumper. Um, these fog lights are aftermarket, uh, but, but they're OEM style, so they are the same shape, same mounting location as the actual factory fog lights. I put those in myself, but weirdly for fog lights on accents, there's no simple trim piece you pop out to put the fog light in. This entire black insert has to be removed um, because that entire piece is where the fog lights mount to. So I had to remove that entire piece, put the new one in, and then put the fog lights in. So that was a bit of a faff, but um, I really do like the way the fog lights look um, on the accent. Um, other design cues that I quite like about the accent, um, you have this body line here, which sort of starts um, in the hood. So right here, and kind of runs along with this, this interesting crease to the hood, but that crease actually runs up and meets with the um, the window belt line and follows the whole way along the car, along the the rear pillar here, right into the top of the tail light. So I always thought that that was a very interesting um, design motif. Um, you know, it's not like they just made a box, put some wheels on it, and called it a day. They actually tried, so that's nice. Um, you also have this kind of style line, kind of hard to see in the camera, there it is, that runs down the side. And um, again, sort of starts on the front fender, runs down the side just below the door handle, meets up pretty much smack dab in the middle of the rear lights, so that's another interesting motif. And they also have um, this kind of cool, I guess you would call it like a, a spear shape. Um, so it comes along and then even the side markers are sort of this interesting spear shape. Kind of reminds me of like a harpoon, but it, it's it's a it's not just a line. They, they've actually given it some sort of design um, idea. Uh, I have LED aftermarket uh, bulbs in my turn signals. Uh, my side repeaters, I should say. Uh, my rims, these are not factory. These are 1998 North American spec Ford Escort alloys. Um, with custom 3D printed uh, center caps that say Hyundai. 
My wheels are incredibly bad shape. I really need to get some new ones. Um, I only got them super cheap because when I first bought the car I didn't have any summer alloys. But um, they actually fit the car pretty well, I thought. So maybe someday I'll try to maybe clean them up and paint them again or something. But they are quite... Uh, if you look at them, it wasn't me, I didn't do it, but they're they're quite curb rashed in a lot of places. The previous owner wasn't easy on them. Um, around the back... <clears throat> um, I always thought the back was an interesting design. They, they had some small design cues on the accent hatchback that they didn't have on the sedan. So for example, tail lights on the accent um, hatchbacks um, they had this kind of chrome treatment around the outside edge. Sedans didn't get that, so I guess that was just to try and make this, the uh, hatchbacks more sporty. And funnily enough, in the South Korean market, the actual model name for the hatchback version was the Accent Sporty, so that's pretty amusing. Um, in the North American market, you have two brake lights slash tail lights because they both function as both. Uh, you have the reverse light with this kind of circle, half circle here, and the turn signal. In the uh, European market, these actually were separated, so I don't know which is which, but one of these would function as your brake light and your tail light, and the other would function as a fog light. Um, we don't require fog lights here in Canada, so that's, um, that's not something we have here. Um, another interesting thing about the back I've always really liked, every accent hatchback came with this rather, I thought, um, sporty looking rear um, spoiler on the top of the hatch uh, with integrated third brake light. So that's kind of a neat design that uh, even, you know, on a base model car, it looks kind of, it looks kind of nice up there. It gives it a slightly sporty flair, so I've always liked that. And that's a standard feature. Every trim level of the hatchback got that. Um, as you can see right here on the roof, it, it's it's melded right into the bodywork of the car. So it's just a neat little detail just to show you that the designers were actually, you know, trying to make it interesting. Um, as was common for the time, you know, small rooftop antenna. Um, one downside I don't like so much about the exterior, although it's probably a good thing, is um, exterior mirrors. Um, I always thought they looked kind of large. So on the hatchback, they're actually larger than the sedan, which most people don't notice, but they look almost overly large to me, and it's probably good because they give you better visibility, but they're, um, they do look kind of big, sort of Dumbo ear-esque to me. Um, pardon my nice clear taillight and my uh, hazy head, pardon me, headlight. Uh, this one was replaced the other year, so it's pretty much new. That one's got a lot of uh, a lot of UV damage. I should at some point try and work out. I also have this wonderful little annoying dent, if I can catch it on the camera, right there. Um, which is, if I can get the camera to focus, probably not. It's kind of blurry, but I had to touch that up with touch-up paint. Something flew up into my hood the other day while I was driving, so that's a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, in terms of um, quality, rust-wise, um, car is in really, really good shape. I have had no rust problems on this side at all. Um, most of the problems on the accents are on the rear arches, like most cars. Haven't had one problem with rust on this side, but on the other side, if I pop around here, try not to trip over everything that I'm walking on. Sort of have a gravel bank here. Um, this side I have had rust on. I was actually in a minor fender bender with this car a few years ago and I had to have um, some dents taken out of this corner. I had hit some ice in the winter and spun around and hit a guardrail, but it wasn't much damage at all. But this had to be repaired, uh, some dents, and then this was repainted. But it started to rust out right here on the rear wheel well. Um, right there, and a tiny, tiny bit right here. This one was because the first place that did that repair put this on too tight, and this corner of the bumper was actually rubbing here, rubbed the paint off, and it started to rust. It was just surface rust, so that's fine now. This I had fixed a few months ago, but it's actually starting, and I don't think I can catch it on the camera because it's very hard to see, but this is actually starting to bubble through. 
because the guy who fixed the rust last time, two and a half months ago, didn't do it right and he missed that there were actually holes in behind so water's coming in from behind and it's bubbling out so in the next few weeks he's supposed to be fixing that properly again for free hopefully because he missed it the first time so uh yeah glad because that was you know 600 and something dollars worth of work that i don't want to have to pay for a second time um but yeah you know as a whole pretty stylish exterior so maybe we'll uh, we'll go in and take a look at the interior because it's already been you know 11 minutes of your time or more and uh, I like to ramble so I guess we'll go to the um, oops if I drop gotta grab my keys here if I don't drop the key um, no keyless entry so you need your key for everything but we'll go in the passenger side first there we go so pardon the dirty interior and things like my uh, grocery bags. Um, interior, as with most cheap economy boxes, very hard plastic. Um, doesn't really bother me at all because, um, you know, how often when you're driving are you really going to be touching all over your door handle? It would be nice, I guess, if some were here on the door, like where your arm would be resting, but it's never really been a problem for me, and I've never had anyone who I've been driving with complain about it. Um, keep fit windows, of course, which I like better. I used to have a 2002 Subaru Impreza before this, and the power windows were always getting stuck in the winter time, and I could not get them down. I've never had a problem opening these, even in the winter. Um, you have a nice deep storage pocket in both doors, um, quite deep. I can pretty much fit my whole hand in there. Um, about, you know, three quarters of an index finger wide, so pretty big. Uh, there's one on the other side as well. Door, ha door handles are just your basic pull variety. I love the locks, because if you're in a hurry and you want to unlock or lock it, it's really easy. Um, speakers. Car comes with four speakers, uh, one in each door, and then one in the uh, back of the car um, on the side. Um, we'll get to that after. Um, of course, manual windows, or pardon me, manual mirrors. Um, inside, the seats, um, it's this kind of very long wearing cloth. There's no real rips or tears in mine at all, just this sort of start of some fraying. It's still not ripped, but just starting to fray on both the driver's side and the passenger side. Um, not many adjustments for the passenger seat other than recline and slide forward and some backwards. Um, but they do make it easy. You've got a nice big handle here for reclining. And if you pull it, it will also um, slide the seat forward. If you're in the back, you actually have this foot pedal you can push that will slide the seat forward. So that's nice. And I'll just, uh, kind of hard to do one-handed. But we'll just, I can get it. Here, put that back for now. Um, you've got in the car, if we step in. Got two airbags. Um, I think US market cars had more. Um, four airbags with the side curtains, but Canadian spec ones, at least of my year, you only had a passenger airbag, and then of course a driver's airbag in the steering wheel. Um, glove box, pretty big, and I'm just gonna slide this chair back, actually. Um, I have a lot of crap in here, so pardon the mess, but I mean, it's enough space for me to have my extra set of sunglasses plus my um, old school analog uh, tire pressure gauge. The cigarette uh, cup, which actually sits in this indent here for people who smoke, plus the user manual, which also has a um, uh, touch-up pen in it. My entire service history in this folded, um, what do you call it, slip cover thing, I guess. And then, as ridiculous as it is, I keep track of my gas mileage. These are all gas receipts from the day I bought the car. I really should just throw them out someday, but I just kind of keep sliding them in there. So glove compartment is really big. Um, super easy access to change the cabin filter if you had to, because if we look in here, kind of hard to see, but there's one clip there and another clip on the other side, and they literally just pop out, and then this entire thing hinges down. So this is at its stop, but these clips are basically the stops for the glove compartment. So when you remove those, the whole thing will hinge down like this and the filter is right behind it. So really easy service on that. Um, 
your visor mirrors. Um, nothing fancy, just really cheap basic ones. Uh, both sides, uh, at least the driver's side, pardon me, has a mirror. Um, I'll get to that one after. Passenger side also has a mirror, which is nice. They're not lighted though, but they are there. Um, I have a dash cam in my car, which I just have routed over the uh, mirror stock there to give uh, this support so it's not all right on the plug. And I use a binder clip just to keep it from moving around. It goes down to the cable there. Um, yeah, um, passenger side's not bad. Um, I have, if I slide this forward, this is about um, this is about flush to where I have it as a driver. Um, you know, maybe not a huge amount of room. That's my feet right on the front wall there. But you know, as a as a passenger, pretty ample room, especially if you slid this back a little bit. Um, so you know, it's not uncomfortable in here uh, in terms of cabin space. Um, but um, I think we'll switch over to the driver's seat just to give us a better view of this stuff. So we'll get out. Pardon all my uh, shaky, crappy camera phone work. So, driver's seat. Um, same thing. Um, same kind of fairly comfortable seats. There isn't a lot of support on these, I'll be honest, so after long trips your back does get a little bit sore because there's, there's no lumbar support. But um, they're not too bad for, you know, longer-ish trips. Driver's side has a height adjustment, plus um, sliding back and forth and recline. Um, it's not really so much a height adjustment up and down, but it kind of tilts this, this way, that knob there. So it does help a little bit with comfort. Uh, we'll just shut the door so that we don't have all the wind noise. Um, you've got your gauge cluster which on the um, Accent, at least my generation of Accent, um, they actually came with multiple cluster types. Mine's the basic one, so just nice big clear tack, fuel, and uh, speedometer. Uh, there was another model that had a uh, cooling gauge here as well, like a, a coolant temperature gauge, and a fuel gauge here, and then this was not in the middle, it was on this side. Um, this is just your odometer, uh, trip meters, all that stuff. Um, steering wheel, just your basic three-spoke variety uh, with airbag. Uh, no horn button. Uh, this is the horn button. You just press on this. Um, you could get this car, depending on the trim level, with um, like cruise control and audio options that would replace these two um, plastic trim pieces here. Um, steering wheel's held up pretty well. It's getting very smooth here because when I tend to be turning or backing up the car, um, I kind of hold the steering wheel here to spin it around. So it's wearing a little bit more than everywhere else, but you know, it's not got the spinny loose problem. Um, it's not overly squishy. It's still nice and comfortable to hold. I'll just straighten it up a little bit. Um, you've got on this side your wiper stock. So uh, if I just start the car up, well, I'm not going to start it, but put it into uh, run. Um, you've got your wiper stock. So um, up is mist function. Um, and then you can go down. So that would be intermittent. That would be low. And then you would have high on the furthest setting down. Um, you have this control on the end. Um, it's simply on for the rear wiper. And if I were to push it up, you get the spray. So if we... Uh, kind of hard to see you with the sun. Um, only thing I don't like about the rear wiper is that the rear wiper... Um, has no intermittent it's just you turn it on and it's just constant so if you're if you're in a, a situation where it's not raining that hard that gets kind of annoying because you're sort of wearing the blade out prematurely because it's wiping more than it needs to but you know cheap car um, this is actually the speed adjustment for the intermittent wipers right here so 
it, it's very handy because when you drive, everything is right here to touch. There's no other separate knobs, you know. Speed is right there, everything's right there for wipers. Uh, light stock is on the left, so you just simply have um, off parking lights and headlights. So um, if you pull back, that would be to flash your beams. Um, if you tap forward, that's high beam. You pull it back again, that's low beam, um, you know, and then usual turn signals. Um, kind of hard to see, but if I lock this in, it's it's uh, daylight, so not glowing very well, but gauges are limited with this interesting sort of, if we get closer, with this interesting sort of uh, lime greeny yellow color, so that's, uh, that's kind of cool. Um, button to switch between trip A, trip B is here, if you press it and hold it, that will clear your trips. Um, down to the left, we have the brightness adjust for the gauges. This is not a European car, so there is no headlight height adjustment. Um, that's not required in Canada. This is your fog light switch bank. So again, Canada, no requirement for rear fog lights, but if you had one, it would go here. Uh, this is my front fog light. No, it's not turned on. Um, because this is an aftermarket button, it glows a little bit more than it should be, but now you can see it's actually on. Um, but when it's off, the light from the actual LED that lights this up bleeds into the the on um, section. So looks like it's on, but it's not. Um, pedals, if I reach you down here, kind of hard to see, but pedals are pretty comfy. Maybe if I open the door, there we go. Pedals are pretty comfy, you know, gas, brake, clutch. Um, only thing I really hate about the pedals is you can't heel toe them at all. Um, there's actually quite a distance between uh, how far back the throttle is to how far forward the brake is. So you can't do any heel toe because the, the gas pedal is way back there, brake pedal is here. So if you're trying to put your foot on the brake and you know do heel towing, it's just not adjusted properly at all. Um, clite, that, wow I can't talk today. Clutch, incredibly light. Um, coming from my Subaru, uh, when I first drove this and then got back into the Subaru, the clutch pedal on the Subaru felt ridiculously heavy. Super, super light, super, super easy to modulate, um, very easy to feel the biting point. Um, so I, I actually quite like this transmission. Um, gear shift, I have an, uh, I have, if the phone wants to focus, I have an aftermarket uh, WRC shift knob that was given to me by a friend. I will shut that to stop the annoying Hyundai dinging, but um, standard issue five speed, so forward, uh, sorry, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Um, it's a very enjoyable transmission. A lot of people would say oh, it's an economy box, it's crap. Um, I actually really like it. It's not slick, but it's got a very pleasant mechanical notchy feeling so but it, it's not hard to modulate I, I can use a few fingers and shift happily you don't need a lot of you know pressure to manhandle it into place um, which I guess would be expected of an economy car but um, you know I can pretty much do it with two fingers if I want to but it has a very pleasant clunk kind of notchiness when you put it in gear um, which is nice mine's a little squeaky uh, maybe have to leave that up sometime, but pardon all the dust. Handbrake, nice and easy, uh, falls easily to hand. Um, you get two cup holders here, one with these helpful sort of rubber things to extra hold your cup, I guess. Uh, no cubby with a door, but you do get, and I have my tire pressure gauge slash emergency window breaker slash FM transmitter here. You do get sort of a just a storage cubby that you can toss stuff in. Um, you get another little storage cubby right here below your uh, fog light switch, which I keep my mailbox key in. Uh, down below, you have this sort of shallow cubby that you can put stuff in. I often lay my phone here when it's charging. You get this kind of uselessly small, um, teeny tiny little cubby hole very tiny in between the um, 
the charging points, which I'll get to in a second. This is just your regular old USB cigarette charger. That shows you how big it is. It's kind of a really uselessly small spot. Um, so I just keep like a, a wall charger from my phone in case I ever need one in here. Plus, um, oops, plus my USB charger and a, a spare charging cable from my phone. Um, but they fit in there quite happily, but that's really all you're gonna fit in there. You get this cubby hole here. I have some of that just dollar store rubbery stuff, and I keep my sunglasses in there. Um, it's very plasticky, so if I didn't have this in here, you'd hear these rattling around a lot, um, which you kind of sometimes still do, but it's not really that bad. Like I said, it's a cheap economy car. This is a decent size. You could put some stuff in it if you wanted to. There is a... Um, there is a slot below your stereo, just a single DIN sort of storage cubby that you can put stuff in. Um, I kind of toss receipts in here and papers and that kind of stuff. Um, center stack is pretty um, pretty well laid out, I thought. Everything, if I'm sitting here driving, um, everything is within fingertip reach. Your hazard light switch is here. Um, rear defrost is here. Your uh, clock is right here. Uh, stereo. I think mine might be on its way out because it doesn't get signal very well for radio, although I don't use radio very often, so that doesn't really matter. But um, it's just your basic stereo, CD stereo with an aux jack. I use the aux input for my MP3 player more than anything, so it's great. Um, climate control vents are, you know, right here, really easy to adjust and modulate. Um, as we go up, uh, rear view mirror, nice and clear. View out the back is actually quite good, um, as you can see there. Hi. Um, just as an amusing point, my, uh, my sun visor, I had to replace it at one point because um, I don't know what had happened to it, but it, it, would, it would not go into any adjustment position other than straight up and down like that. That was useless as a sun visor, but my replacement actually came from South Korea, so I have wonderful uh, South Korean writing on it compared to my English, um, my English passenger side one. Um, what else do we have in the interior? Well, I guess we should go to the back seat. So we'll just pop out. I like to go from the passenger side because that way I don't have to mess with my seating position. Actually, I'm an idiot. Let me sit the phone down and shut that door so the dinging doesn't drive you crazy because I forgot to shut it. There we go. All right, so back seat. Guess I should shut off my, uh, I did forget to mention the center stack for the HVAC. My favorite style of HVAC, um, I just like the standard issue three knobs, temperature, fan speed, and uh, direction, face, feet, whatever. My car has no AC. Um, this is the Recirc. If this was a car with AC, these would usually be silver colored in the higher trim levels and you would have some additional options on the direction if it did have AC and the AC button would be where that blank switch is. So that's just the overview on that. But back seat, um, like I said, I have my driver's seat set where I would have it as a driver. Um, I have the passenger seat set roughly as I would have it as a driver. Legroom is very good back here. Uh, I could even slide this back a tidge more and it would be fine. Um, foot room, um, if I didn't have my grocery bags there, foot room would be great that you could slide your feet under that no problem. You don't get a storage net on the driver's seat. You do get a handy little storage net on the back of the passenger seat. I keep some spare oil here, some pens if I need them. Um, I've got this kind of spare screwdriver that I carry in the car just in case. Um, you have holy, holy shit handles for both front passenger, rear passenger, and other rear passenger. Interior light is, you know, your basic issue. Um, one's full over is on, middle is door, full left is off. Um, I have an LED bulb in mine. Um, just because it's actually quite a bit brighter than the uh, stock bulb was. You get a armrest. 
because cheap Korean economy car um, driver gets an armrest which I never use because if I'm driving that's going to get in the way of my shifting because I'm going to keep hitting it with my elbow so I have literally never used that in my entire life um, but I have one um, speakers in the back you have one on either side um, that's actually the only other problem I've had with this car. These speakers actually died um, a few years ago. They started to get very crackly and unpleasant, so I did have them replaced, um, but everything is good now. Front speakers are still the original factory ones. They still sound fine. Stereo sound is actually not amazing, but it's not bad, so I can't complain. Um, the rear seats, they're... Um, split rear seats so either this small side will fold down or that large side will fold down um, I have decent headroom so I don't know if you can tell but I mean lots and lots of space there um, my hair likes to stick up that's flat to my skull but you know inch or two of space there um, so can't complain about comfort in the back in terms of headroom I will use my foot pedal here we'll go take a look at the trunk reach the door and then we'll uh, go look at the engine bay and then we'll call it quits. I just put my chair back the way I keep it. There we go. I'm gonna go retrieve my keys because I think my trunk is locked. Because you know vlog style video that I'm doing with absolutely no thought whatsoever. Um, I did have to get this handle replaced. I didn't have to, but this handle is actually a known fault on these cars. There's a pin that runs across in here that the handle actually hinges on, and the pin will actually rust over time and snap. So the handle still works, but instead of pulling straight, it kind of pulls at a wonky angle and eventually fails so that you can't open the trunk. Um, mine is a brand new replacement, so it works fine. Um, every uh, Accent MC hatchback had one of these. Your nice handy parcel shelf. I have some cool 3D printed clips that I made, uh, well I designed and then had someone print out for me that hold my snow brush up and out of the way. You get one little interior trunk light, um, again swapped for an LED. Trunk space is pretty good, you know, not amazing. Pretty sunny today, so sorry for the shininess. But uh, I carry a bunch of crap in there. That's some car stuff, like my um, little snow grippers in case my car gets stuck on some ice or snow. Um, some replacement bulbs are in there. My uh, box of mechanics, rubber gloves, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, my big summer window thing bike pump because one of my current t summer tires has a slow leak. Um, old wiper blades but I always keep one as a spare just in case because you never know when someone's going to nick one in a parking lot which has happened once or twice. Um, I won't bother lifting this all up but you have a nice uh, spare tire well. Not a full size spare, it is a donut but um, spare tire well is down there along with your jack and your jack handle. I actually have a bunch of other stuff in there because it's surprisingly um, surprising amount of space so I keep like some extra grocery bags and that kind of stuff down there. Um, I only other problem I had in terms of quality if my camera will focus these two trim pieces here are both broken on either side and that was actually my fault that was not the car's fault and the reason is if I shut oops shut and lock my trunk again there we go the reverse, uh, not the reverse light, sorry, license plate lights. I replaced those with LEDs at some point, but they are, um, the only way you can access them is from inside the trunk, from the back. So you actually have to open this, take off those two trim pieces, take off another additional trim piece, and then the big piece on the back and reach through the tiny holes to try and change them out. It's kind of ridiculous. So that's a really bad design flaw. Um, but yeah, as again, I like to ramble, so I apologize, but interior, pretty comfy. Um, not bad at all. If we go in, sorry, it's probably still unlocked, but I have a force of habit of unlocking it with the key, so we'll 
pop the hood in a second, take a look at that, but I figured that uh, I would just do the hub nut thing of showing you whether there is a um, triangle of doom. So I have to adjust this one nozzle because it aims way the heck up here for some reason, but as you can see, no triangles of doom. Decent spray pattern, although I do have to adjust that one, so you know, wipers are good. Can't complain about those. Uh, hood release is down here. Uh, this is your fuse panel, I should mention, as well as your OBD2 port. And also, just kind of a fun thing, gas release is there. One thing I love about the gas cap is when you take it off, you have this handy dandy holder on your gas door. So you have a place to put your cap when you're filling up, so you can't accidentally lose it. Uh, last thing, of course, is the engine bay. Uh, catch is on the left, very easy to do. I'll just grab my... Eh. I do with one hand. There we go. Grab the hood prop. Um, so the engine in these cars is a 1.6 liter um, G4 ED Alpha 2 um, with multi-point fuel injection. Uh, it's an inline four cylinder. Um, and you've got to your battery here, uh, air box here, um, fuse panel here. This is the wiring from my aftermarket fog lights. Runs down to the battery and then down there. Uh, radiator, of course, at the front. Um, very easy to fill caps right there. Lots and lots of space to get to everything. Um, engine oil is here. Engine uh, filler cap is here. Um, I like the filler cap because it's actually like a sort of almost ratcheting lid. So when you know that you got it tight enough because much like a gas cap it will click. So you'll know you've got it tight enough. Again everything's easy to access. Power steering fluid, washer fluid, coolant, I get my car undercoated. This weird stuff is actually like a waxy undercoating, so it looks disgusting in here. And annoyingly enough, it picks up dirt like crazy, but no rust in here. Thank heavens. Um, washer tank is huge, so it actually goes that far down into the bottom of the car. And conveniently enough, you get these kind of bubble fill holes. So you know how much washer fluid you have because when you pull this dipstick out the the washer fluid will actually fill these little bubble holes to tell you how full it is. So right now I know that I only have like one or two holes worth but it will fill pretty much all the way up to the top of this. You have a huge washer reservoir in these cars. Um, only problem I have with the engine is this heat shield here is actually loose because, thank you Nova Scotia DOT, all the salt has actually caused these to rust out right around the bolts. So the bolts are actually in the engine, but this one's rusted out. This one is rusted out. Um, the one single one that's down there is rusted out. The clip that holds my O2 sensor is rusted off. So maybe I'll replace this at some point, but you don't actually hear it when you're driving around. It's not going to fall into anything. It can't fall off because it's basically resting on the O2 sensor, so not a big deal. Um, what else? Oh, brake reservoir is up here, so that's also easy to get to. Um, but yeah, everything's nice and straightforward, so we'll just shut up my hood. Again, just trying to do this one-handed. Probably getting grease on my good sweater. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Wonderful. But, uh, yeah. Decent car. No troubles with it. Hoping I can have it uh, for years to come. Super reliable. Um, I don't mind the look of it. Pardon the sun glint. And, uh, yeah. I highly recommend them if you just want a basic daily driver.